Today we're going to talk about the electric guitar. An instrument that has moved masses, marked eras and revolutionized the world with the great influence of its performers. I think it is such an important instrument for popular culture that it would be a crime if nobody dedicated a video reviewing its origins and all the influence it has had. Having said that, we can begin. First I want to talk about the guitar. Before the development of the electric guitar and the use of synthetic materials, a guitar was defined as being an instrument having a long, fretted neck, flat wooden sound board, ribs, and a flat back, most often with incurved sides, the term is used to refer to a number of chordophones that were developed and used across Europe, beginning in the 12th century and, later, in the Americas. A 3,300-year-old stone carving of a Hittite bard playing a stringed instrument is the oldest iconographic representation of a chordophone in clay plaques from Babylonia show people playing an instrument that has a strong resemblance to the guitar, indicating a possible Babylonian origin for the guitar. The modern word guitar, and its antecedents, has been applied to a wide variety of chordophones since classical times and as such causes confusion. The English word guitar, the German jitter, and the French guitar were all adopted from the Spanish guitarra, which comes from the Andalusian Arabic, and the Latin cithara, which in turn came from the ancient Greek. Many influences are cited as antecedents to the modern guitar. Although the development of the earliest guitars is lost in the history of medieval Spain, two instruments are commonly cited as their most influential predecessors, the European lute and its cousin, the four-string oud, the latter was brought to Iberia by the Muslim in the 8th century. At least two instruments called guitars were in use in Spain by 1200, the guitarra latina, Latin guitar, and the so-called guitarra morisca, Moorish guitar. The guitarra morisca had a rounded back, wide fingerboard, and several sound holes. The guitarra latina had a single sound hole and a narrower neck. By the 14th century the qualifiers moresca or morisca and latina had been dropped, and these two chordophones were simply referred to as guitars. Finally, circa 1850, the form and structure of the modern guitar is credited to Spanish guitar maker Antonio Torres Jurado, who increased the size of the guitar body, altered its proportions, and invented the breakthrough fan-braced pattern. Bracing, which refers to the internal pattern of wood reinforcements used to secure the guitar's top and back and prevent the instrument from collapsing under tension, is an important factor in how the guitar sounds. Chorus design greatly improved the volume, tone, and projection of the instrument, and it has remained essentially unchanged since. Before we start talking about the electric guitar I want to mention other types of guitar. Guitars can be divided into two broad categories, acoustic and electric guitars. Within each of these categories, there are also further subcategories. Acoustic guitars form several notable subcategories within the acoustic guitar group, classical and flamenco guitars, steel string guitars, which include the flat-topped, or folk, guitar, 12-string guitars, and the arched-top guitar. Renaissance and Baroque guitars are the ancestors of the modern classical and flamenco guitar. Classical guitars, also known as Spanish guitars, are typically strung with nylon strings, plucked with the fingers, played in a seated position and are used to play a diversity of musical styles including classical music. Flat top or steel string guitars are similar to the classical guitar, however, within the varied sizes of the steel stringed guitar the body size is usually significantly larger than a classical guitar, and has a narrower, reinforced neck and stronger structural design. Arch top guitars are steel string instruments in which the top, and often the back, of the instrument are carved, from a solid billet, into a curved, rather than a flat, shape. Resonator, resophonic or dobrous similar to the flat top guitar in appearance, but with a body that may be made of brass, nickel silver, or steel as well as wood, the sound of the resonator guitar is produced by one or more aluminum resonator cones mounted in the middle of the top. The physical principle of the guitar is therefore similar to the loudspeaker. The 12-string guitar usually has steel strings, and it is widely used in folk music, blues, and rock and roll. Rather than having only six strings, the 12-string guitar has six courses made up of two strings each, like a mandolin or lute. Within the electric guitars we can find seven string and eight string. Now, let's start talking about the electric guitar. 
Many experiments at electrically amplifying the vibrations of a string instrument were made dating back to the early part of the 20th century. Patents from the 1910s show telephone transmitters were adapted and placed inside violins and banjos to amplify the sound. Hobbyists in the 1920s used carbon button microphones attached to the bridge, however, these detected vibration from the bridge on top of the instrument, resulting in a weak signal. With numerous people experimenting with electrical instruments in the 1920s and early 1930s, there are many claimants to have been the first to invent an electric guitar. Electric guitars were originally designed by acoustic guitar makers and instrument manufacturers. The first electric guitars used in jazz were hollow arch top acoustic guitar bodies with electromagnetic transducers. Early electric guitar manufacturers include Rickenbacker in 1932, Dobro in 1933, National, Audiovox and Volutone in 1934, Vega, Epiphone, Electrophone and Elector, and Gibson in 1935. George Beecham, along with Adolf Rickenbacker, invented the electromagnetic pickups. Coils that were wrapped around a magnet would create an electromagnetic field that amplified the vibrations of the guitar strings. Commercial production began in late summer of 1932 by the Ropat Incorporation, Electro Patent Instrument Company, in Los Angeles, a partnership of Beecham, Adolf Rickenbacker, originally Rickenbacher, and Paul Barth. In 1934, the company was renamed the Rickenbacker Electro Stringed Instrument Company. By early mid-1935, Electro String Instrument Corporation had achieved mainstream success with the A22 frying pan steel guitar, and set out to capture a new audience through its release of the Electro Spanish Model B and the Electro Spanish Ken Robert, which was the first full 25-inch scale electric guitar ever produced. The Electro Spanish Ken Roberts was revolutionary for its time, providing players a full 25 inches scale, with easy access to 17 frets free of the body. Unlike other lap steel electrified instruments produced during the time, the Electro Spanish Ken Roberts was designed to play standing vertical, upright with a strap. The Electro Spanish Ken Roberts was also the first instrument to feature a hand-operated vibrato as a standard appointment, a device called the Vibrilla, invented by Doc Kaufman. It is estimated that fewer than 50 Electro Spanish Ken Roberts were constructed between 1933 and 1937, fewer than 10 are known to survive today. Gibson's first production electric guitar, marketed in 1936, was the ES-150 model, ES for electric Spanish, and 150 reflecting the $150 price of the instrument, along with matching amplifier. The ES-150 guitar featured a single coil, hexagonally shaped bar pickup, which was designed by Walt Fuller. It became known as the Charlie Christian pickup, named for the great jazz guitarist who was among the first to perform with the ES-150 guitar. The ES-150 achieved some popularity but suffered from unequal loudness across the six strings. A functioning solid-body electric guitar was designed and built in 1940 by Lep Paul from an Epiphone acoustic arch top, as an experiment. His log guitar a wood post with a neck attached and two hollow body halves attached to the sides for appearance only shares nothing in common for design or hardware with the solid body Gibson Le Paul, designed by Ted McCarty and introduced in 1952. Although other genres already used the electric guitar I think it was the jump blues that later evolved into rhythm and amp, blues and rock and amp, roll the genres that popularized the electric guitar and began to make it what it is today. During the 1950s and 1960s, the electric guitar became the most important instrument in popular music. It has evolved into an instrument that is capable of a multitude of sounds and styles in genres ranging from pop and rock to country music, blues and jazz. It served as a major component in the development of electric blues, rock and roll, rock music, heavy metal music and many other genres of music. Fender and Gibson have always been pitted against each other by fans. Great guitarists have used the Gibson other Fenders, in my opinion they are different guitars but both sound incredible. I believe that the success of guitars is not due to their manufacturer or the marketing behind them, guitars have gotten where they are thanks to the guitarists who have played them, it is true that a better guitar can make you sound better. But a great guitarist with any guitar sounds good, if not ask Zach Wilde capable of playing with a Hello Kitty guitar and transmitting the music as he always does.
To give you an idea of how important the guitarist is, there have been auctions of guitars that were bought for about $2,000 and then sold for millions of dollars just because of who played them, don't you think it's incredible? I think that's it, give a like if you like it and see you soon.